Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4, my name's Camel, and in this video I will show you how to acquire a rather unique heavy weapon known as Broadsider, an 18th century naval cannon. Now to acquire Broadsider we will need to complete the quest Last Voyage of the USS Constitution. And before we go any further I would highly recommend that your character has an intelligence of 9 or higher. This will allow you to shorten the quest time from anything from 20 minutes to an hour. You'll see why in a minute. If you haven't done this quest and you don't want a good storyline spoiled, you can click this link on screen to skip all the spoilers and go straight to the review of the weapon. And for those of us that don't give a ship, let's go. So first of all, we will need to come to the USS Constitution. It's pretty easy to spot. And on the map, it is about a 30 second walk east of Bunker Hill. As we approach the USS Constitution, a lookout robot will approach us and tell us to go up and talk to the captain. This will start the quest last voyage of the USS Constitution, the very quest we need to be on. So we need to head to the top deck and talk to Ironsides, the captain of the ship. He will tell you to consult with Bosun and Mr. Navigator. And as soon as you leave dialogue, there will be a scavenger attack. Be sure to fight them off and complete that quest stage. Then head below deck and talk to Bosun. After talking to him, we will have to go and repair three sets of wires around the ship. And as you can see, the bottom option is if you have an intelligence of three, you can just fix it instantly. If not, cables can be found around the ship. So either way, it is quite fast. After fixing all three head back to Bosun. He will then give us the next stage of the quest which is to repair or buy a replacement power relay coil. Now if we have an intelligence of five we can just repair it instantly. If not we will have to leave the ship and go exploring to vendors around the map and find a spare power relay coil. This is where the intelligence comes in to save you lots of time on this quest. After repairing the power relay coil head back to Bosun to complete this stage of the quest. We then need to head back to the top deck and talk to Mr. Navigator who will inform us that the scavengers stole the guidance chip and we must go and retrieve it. But luckily the scavengers are only about 20 meters away from the ship, so this takes almost no time at all. If you get into a conversation with Mandy, tell her to take a hike down into a punji pit by letting her know that you want to help Ironsides. Although this specific dialogue option doesn't matter, overall if you side with the scavengers during this quest you cannot acquire Broadsider, so keep that in mind to always help the robots. And it's also just fun to tell Mandy to go screw. In the back room of the building that Mandy came out of there is a filing cabinet and inside this filing cabinet is the guidance chip that we need to steal back. However be careful because it is under the watchful eye of a mercenary at all times and as soon as you steal the chip all of the scavengers will become hostile. Not a problem just run out of there straight back to the ship. Back on the top deck put the chip into the core guidance system completing the stage of the quest. Then once again talk to Mr. Navigator. We will now need to fix the guidance systems radar and the option at the bottom requires an intelligence of 9 plus, which if you have it you can repair it instantly, saving you once again plenty of time in terms of quest completion. If not, you will be sent across the map to waste your time retrieving a Poseidon radar transmitter. Remember to always work smart, not hard. After repairing it, talk to Mr. Navigator once again. He will inform us that Captain Ironsides wishes to speak to us once again. Captain Ironsides will inform us that we need to retrieve some FLL3 turbo pump bearings for the rocket thrust on the ship. Unfortunately for this stage in the quest there is no intelligence check that we can use to bypass finding these components. You will be sent to one of five randomized locations to go and acquire these turbo pump bearings. It will as always be marked on your map and quite easy to acquire. So once we acquire the FLL3 turbo pump bearings, we need to head back to the USS Constitution and in the captain quarters repair the turbo pump. Once this is done, head back to the top deck and talk to Captain Ironsides. As soon as we lose dialogue, a massive scavenger attack will be initiated. Prepare for a huge fight and to defend the USS Constitution at any cost. So once the Legion of Scavengers have been defeated, head back to Captain Ironsides, continuing to help him and he will reward us with the unique 18th century naval cannon Broadsider. As always, before looking at Broadsider's base stats, I have reduced all of my character's special attribute stats to 1. I also have no bobblehead perk or magazine effects applied to my character. What this means is we will be seeing the absolute minimum base stats of Broadsider. So with no modifications applied, Broadsider has a base ballistic damage of 119. It uses the cannonball as ammunition. Its fire rate is 2, its range is 203. Its accuracy is 63, its weight is 27.4, and its value is 245. 
5. For the mods, we're going to be adding the light barrel, which gives better hip fire accuracy. We will slap on the steady grip, which gives better recoil and hip fire accuracy. And the multi shot canister, which increases the ammunition capacity from 1 to 3. So now that Broadside has been fully modded, it still has a base ballistic damage of 119. It still uses the cannon balls as ammunition. Its fire rate has increased tenfold from 2 to 20. Its range is still 203. Its accuracy has actually decreased from 63 to 61. Its weight has increased from 27.4 to 29.6. And its value has increased all the way up to 400 caps. So, Broadsider is an unusual heavy weapon mixing 18th century ordnance with 23rd century technology. The main body consists of a small old fashioned naval cannon, possibly a muzzle loading swivel gun, strapped to a makeshift rig with metal rivets and thick ropes. This rig allows it to be carried around with both hands easily, and includes a hinge allowing the cannon to be angled vertically for easy reloading. It fires cannonballs via an electronic trigger taped to the back handle. Interestingly, although it is not stated anywhere, Broadsider actually has an explosion effect on impact. This means that Broadsider's ballistic damage can be increased with both the Heavy Gunner perk and the Demolition Expert perk. With both of those maxed out and the Bloody Mess perks on top, I was able to get Broadsider's per shot damage to about 450. So it's definitely not something that should be taken lightly. Well, it is a heavy weapon. But assuming you modded it as I did, we can now fire off three shots pretty damn quickly. Most of the other weapons that can deliver huge damages like Broadsider are quite slow when firing. But as mentioned, we now have an ammunition capacity of three, delivering a deadly triplet barrage of cannonballs to the enemies, which makes it an incredibly appropriate weapon for the Armageddon. Now, of course, Broadsider is incredibly useful and the perfect end game weapon for your pirate character. However, what is it like actually in use? Well, as we know, the Broadsider is a very powerful weapon, only surpassed by a fully upgraded Gauss Rifle, a Missile Launcher, and a Fat Man in terms of raw damage output. But it's not all fun and games, there are some downsides, or there are some bilge. <laughs> Ugh. It's considerable weight, very limited range, lack of aiming power, low ammo capacity, pronounced ballistic trajectory of its projectiles, and its exceedingly rare ammunition make it more of a weapon for occasional use than a conventional tool for regular field deployment. In VATS I found the range to be absolutely fine, you can hit pretty much anything you would be able to hit with any normal gun. Outside of VATS however, the projectiles do have a trajectory so you need to compensate by aiming up rather like using a bow in Skyrim. And yes, although this weapon can pretty much end the life of any enemy you encounter, it's very rare ammunition, the cannonball does limit its use. On the subject of cannonballs, 10 can be found in the castle tunnels, 10 can be found at the back of Fort Strong, several more cannonballs can be found in the castle armory on a shelf, and cannonballs are also occasionally sold by vendors in small amounts. So if you ever do encounter a vendor that is selling cannonballs, I would suggest you buy them. Even if you don't want to use Broadsider immediately, you will thank yourself much further down the track when you decide to give the weapon a shot and you've got plenty of cannonballs for ammunition. Now although I didn't really have any issues aiming outside of that and hitting enemies, it's not something I would really suggest as if you miss you have wasted a cannonball. So personally I would push that you only use broadsider inside of vats. Unless of course you really just don't give a damn. You should also be careful when firing at enemies right in front of you as the explosion effect could take you and your companions out. And if you do get hit you will be seeing stars and birds. Or you will be seeing starboard. Also, while we're talking about companions, no companion in the game can use Broadsider. And now for some interesting information about Broadsider. The marking on this cannon is the Royal Cipher of King George III, born in 1738, reigned from 1760 to 1820. There appears to be a date on the first reinforcing ring above the cipher, which shows the year 1820. As King George III died in January 1820, this means that this cannon was cast in the foundry during that month. The second reinforcing ring above the cipher is illegible, but the information on that ring might state the weight and inspector's mark. There is no historical reason for a British cannon from 1820 to be aboard the USS Constitution, which does make me unsure of the law behind Broadsider. After all this, I'm beginning to think that this weapon isn't cannon. And here it is, Broadsider in action.
And there you have it, there is the guide to Broadsider, the unique 18th century naval cannon. I do hope that this video helped you in acquiring this weapon and also understanding its pros and cons. If you did enjoy this video and you would like to see other Fallout 4 guides, please feel free to click on the playlist button on screen. This will of course take you directly to my Fallout 4 guides playlist where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely. Or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 guides that I upload. I would once again like to thank you very much for watching and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.